Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I remove the optics and lenses from my Orphec OR3 light bars. All right guys, thanks for joining me again on another episode of Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna cover uh, one of the questions I've been asked most about um, in the last couple of months, and that is how I went about removing the built-in lenses on this Orphec OR360 light bar. Now, I have only done the one so far. These three are still to be done, so I figured I may as well grab the camera and take you guys along for the journey. And just to go back a step and explain why I wanna do this, I should probably explain why I have the Orphex installed on this tank in the first place altogether. Now, as you know, I run Philips Coral Care Gen 2. I run three of these units, which put out an absolute ton of light. They are big commercial style lights and they have no trouble putting out plenty of par, plenty of spread, plenty of oomph into the tank. Now, if they have any criticisms at all, it's that they do not do enough of the blue spectrum. Now, that's one of those things that comes down to personal preference. And I must admit, I drank a little bit of the Kool-Aid of that at the start, and I personally thought that that was true. They did not put out enough blue light. Turns out they probably do, but it never hurts to add a bit of extra blue spectrum, particularly in this day and age where we're adding more and more blue into these tanks. So I went ahead and purchased four of these Orphec OR360 blue supplement light bars. Now, what I'll do is I'll turn the, uh, the coral cares off so you can see the light just from the Orphex, and then you'll see why I wanted to remove the optics from these uh, lights, and it's mostly down to the way I have them installed. I don't have them running long ways along my tank, I have them running front to back in between my coral cares. I'm gonna switch the uh, coral cares off so you can get a better look. All right, now that I've got the uh, coral cares switched off and I just have the Orphex running, you can see a very visible light coming from the first three on this end, and then the one from the fourth is kind of diffused a lot more because those optics are removed. Now, of course, it doesn't put out anywhere near as much punch in that area because the light is spreading in all directions rather than focusing down on one beam. But for my purposes where I'm just trying to add a bit of a general wash of blue, it suits me much more just to have a light amount of par of blue going everywhere rather than a real strong band. So you can see underneath this one here, we've got a very strong band of lighting there come across to the next one, you can see there, in between, there is a bit of blend, but there's definitely a bright patch here, and there's definitely a bright patch here, and when, if, if I've just cleaned the glass or something like that, and there's a little bit of particulate in the water, you can even see the stream of the light coming down there. Again, we've got another one all the way over here for the next Orphec. In between these two uh, bombies is a very strong patch of light. But then the fourth one, where the optics are removed, it's much more blended, it, it's spread out much better. So, again, I'm gonna lose a lot of punch from these lights by removing the, the optics, but I'm not looking for punch. I've got that in spades with the Coral Care. All I wanna do is to make this blue barring a little less noticeable. I want it to fill the whole tank. So I'll go about removing these lights. Um, I'll take them off the rack. I'll get them over on my kitchen bench and I'll show you step by step how we go about removing these optics. Obviously, if you're doing this at the point of installing the lights, you won't need to remove them. But uh, for others like myself, it's only a few minute job. All right, I've got the uh, three remaining light bars off the tank and I'm gonna just run through the process step by step on how I go about removing these optics. Now, as far as I can remember, there's really only two tools you need. I've got a uh, two and a half mil uh, Allen key and I've got a pretty large flat screwdriver. Realistically, there's not that much to it. You'll see on the front plate of the uh, LED bar, there's two uh, Allen bolts there. Take both of those out using the Allen key, funnily enough. Make sure you don't lose those bolts because uh, they appear to be stainless steel and a fairly uh, bespoke size, which um, I don't know, might be a little bit of a challenge for a local bolt shop to find. Once you've got those two out, I then take the end cap off that does not have the lead. So this one's got the lead coming out. I take the other end out. That's got four bolts, same size, which is convenient. You'll notice when you're undoing these bolts, they're not overly tight. Um, they're barely, barely nipped up at all. So uh, when you're putting it back together, don't go crazy um, tightening these things down. I'm assuming they uh, really don't need to be that tight. All right, now I've got those four bolts off. I should be able to remove that end cap, which I have now done. 
I'm gonna keep the bolts in there. You notice it also has a little uh, rubber gasket on there just to make sure no water gets in the light because uh, you know moisture and electricity doesn't tend to go all that well together. Main thing being here, don't lose the gasket. Don't rip the gasket. You wanna put this thing back together the way it was minus the uh, optics. Now you'll be able to see, try and get it in nice and close on the camera. You can see this uh, little aluminum plate that those uh, bolts come down onto from the uh, front here. They basically sandwich onto the, uh, onto the extrusion. You won't be able to, to pry them up. You're gonna to need to pry them out. Then you can lift up the, uh, lift up the uh, acrylic or you can just lift up the acrylic. Now, it can be a little difficult because they do use some sort of uh, adhesive. I do find it easier to remove that little, uh, little plate that bolts down and then it gives you a lot more room. Then I get the smudge bar in there. Let's use leverage. hear that glue just starting to lift up as you were uh, pry it up. Once you get it started, it should come fairly easy. There you have it. That's the uh, front plate. Then all the optics from there will literally just pop out. That's how easy it is to remove the optics. You'll notice they're a fairly, uh, fairly standard sort of lens. You could probably replace those for something else if you wanted to modify the, uh, the range. They just sit back on. If you like, you, I mean, you can keep these. You might end up putting them back on, who knows. I am not fussed about it. <laughs> I guess for resale, I should probably keep the optics, but um, I'm not too fussed. So I'm most likely just gonna put them in the bin what you could also do would be to get another bit of uh, acrylic made up without this black uh, circles around the optics, which would let the, the light, now that the optics are off, that black part's actually restricting a bit of the light. So, you, I mean, you could probably scratch that off or you could get another bit of acrylic made and um, put that in in its place. Up to you. I'm just gonna bolt this back together though. And to do that, you literally just sit that back in the channel that you just pulled it out of get your uh, aluminium bolt slash washer slash thingamajig. You wanna line that up. I tend to hold it in there, grab that little bolt. I put the uh, acrylic back on first, so we're doing reverse order, just so I can hold that plate in place. And remember, we're not doing these up super tight and we're dropping things. But uh, that should be all we need to do. We put the uh, rest of the bolts back in Pick up our draft tools. Bolt this end plate back on. Again, being mindful of the uh, gasket. You'll notice I'm not even grabbing the handle. I'm just spinning the uh, shaft of the Allen key because that's more than tight enough. Just got fine little aluminum threads in this uh, extrusion. No need to go crazy tight. There we go. Clean a bit of the excess uh, Goo off. That bad boy's ready to go back above the tank. Not gonna lie, this was hot, sweaty work. All right, guys, there you have it. I've got all four of my Orphic OR3 modified now, and um, I'm really happy with the even spread across the tank now. I'll switch the Philips Coral Cares off and show you some footage there of just the Orphix running now. Now, I must admit, I don't have a par meter handy at the moment, so it would have been interesting to see just how um, dramatic of a drop off we had before with that really narrow beam and then sort of nothing either side, as opposed to taking those uh, lenses off and getting the really wide spread. But um, as you can see on the video, you're still getting plenty of light. And uh, for me, I'm not using the Orphex for any real sort of par numbers. I'm using it to get some blue spectrum throughout there, just for an aesthetic visual purpose. So. It's doing that job perfectly now. I couldn't be happier. It probably took me maybe about five to 10 minutes per light, not including the time it takes me to take them off the light rail and put them back on the light rail. But um, 
not a very difficult uh, modification and uh, has made these Orfec light bars much more usable for my use case. Again, it depends on your use case. I should also point out, I am not overly sure, but this could well void your warranty. That being said, if you're careful, there's not any uh, seals or anything you have to break there. If you were careful with this process and you kept all of the uh, lenses, you could put this back to factory and no one would be the wiser. Just be careful so you don't break anything and um, you really can't go too wrong. I will wrap this video up there. I do have coming in the next couple of videos a special uh, another DIY hack, this time for a uh, custom mount that I'm using for my uh, Kessel A360X that I'm gonna be mounting on uh, this tank here. It's something pretty cool. So uh, if you're enjoying the uh, light modifications or and pump modifications, things like that, be sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything at all like that, pop it down in the comment section below. I personally respond to each and every one. So if you're wanting to reach out to me, that's the best place to do it. And last but not least, if you're yet to subscribe, do me a solid favor, hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. It goes a long way to helping me out in this YouTube venture so I can keep making videos like this and sharing my little tips and tricks with you guys. Till next time though, guys, I will leave it at that. Stay safe, keep reefing, bye.